Okay, so things I like about your swing setup wise are the following words. You get the club squared up at a 90 degree angle behind the ball, which is great. Get the club and ball positioned neutrally in the middle of your stance, and for an iron like this, which is a 7, it's perfect. Got good posturing, nice tilt to your spine, a little flexing to your knees. Just the shaft is a little too raised. You can see between your hands and the club, there's not much space, quite narrow. Look at the distancing I have here. So I would suggest that you set the club angle first. Take your grip and just have your hands a bit lower and then set your upper and lower body after so you have better balance and more extension. You're not going to be as crowded or tucked, right? The more room you have, the easier it is to make a turn without relying on small muscles of placing it there, right? So a little better balance and more space. As you walk back, as we go back to see your takeaway now, you can see how the club has to move away. Because there's a bit of rigid tension here, the club's got to move out, the club head. So see that? Moves out. Then you pick it up with your wrists. You place it in a pretty good position, but there's recovery. And typically when there's daylight between our knees, that's an indication that our arms have pulled the club back. If your legs stay quieter, that means there's more of a turn and more stability in your body weight to begin with in your legs. So from here, great recovery. Club comes over the top a little bit. Your right knee reflexes. The left hip clears, and the club swings on down with your arms, and you clear it. But it does involve that recovery factor. So those moving parts mean you've got to time things that much more precise to keep the ball going to where you want, which sometimes isn't that easy. So, again, we keep it quieter, less moving parts, it'll hold better.